Georgia. That's Georgia Chapel in the church. This was my third song. And I was given, you know, sometimes people give me nicknames. You know, young lady that I had in my life who was quite weird and very Fathom is similar to the word 
on the sand. Except the word fathom means that something is difficult to understand after giving serious thought to it. Therefore, we must conclude that anything we come up with, whether it be an invention, new trend, new style, new thing, medical breakthrough, or even a catchy phrase, it is something that has been thought of uh, or, or has been invented already or said. We never just experienced or witnessed it in our lifetime. So in this era, somebody shout this era. This era we are living in, there are so many catchy phrases and quotes that even our younger generation think they are saying something that is new, something that is hip, or speaking in a code to confuse us older folks. But really, in all honesty, older people have a code of language too. Can I get a witness here? Amen. I mean, they have lived to understand, amen, that it's not just something to be accepted, but in other words, it's an opportunity for us to realize that God has a message, amen, that even the young folks can decipher. However, my beloved brothers and sisters, amen, older people have this code of language that you have to live in order to understand not just saying something to be accepted. To draw closer to where I'm going with this, it is interesting to see how the use of word of the word by has become so common in communication for about the last four years. Matter of fact, it is used so common that a New York magazine named The Guardian reported that it is the most popularized and overused thing in the United States since 2022. You know, everybody say, I'm vibing with this, I'm vibing with that crew, I'm vibing with that crew. Oh man, I like to go to that church. There's a whole vibe over there. I like to hang with that crew or hang with that party because it's a whole other vibe. Everybody is vibing nowadays. And I thought, I said, man, you know how, how, how all this thing about these vibes, and you know, and, it, and really, vibe is equated to even your spirit. Can I get with me? Because the truth is, because some people's spirit just don't agree with yours. Some people, amen, their aura, their disposition, their give off, it just doesn't rest well with you. Have you ever been invited to somebody's house? Amen, amen. Again, the whole atmosphere is not what you expected. Oh, yes, yeah. oh, yes, yeah. amen. Just your spirit, amen. And sometimes, even my wife tells me, she says, baby, fix your face. And I was like, why? Well, I, I gotta fix my face because it's showing all over your face that you don't want to be here. You don't want nobody to bother you. You don't want nobody to sit next to you. And I said, Lord, as a child of God, please give me that light that can draw others. But baby, on the right day, at the wrong time, I don't want to see nobody, talk to nobody, or be around anybody. Just be God. I'm just going to praise you all by myself. That's why I check myself before I come to church. Because I realize that I, my spirit, if I want somebody to be abiding and loving, then my spirit has to be abiding and loving. But some people are on a vibe. Sometimes you don't know whether they're going or coming. You don't know what they're going to say or do next. And you say, no, get me behind me, Satan. Get me with your head. And sometimes these vibes, you got to be careful about these vibes. And we understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, I laugh at young folks sometimes. And I'm laughing, amen, in a criticizing way, but I just laugh at these young whippersnappers because in conversation when they say, I'm catching a vibe. I said, vibe? Really? And I thought I was in retro because really what you call a vibe in 2024 or since 2022. It's the same thing that the Beatles had in 1966. Oh, yeah. Y'all remember, I'm giving our good vibrations. Y'all remember the song? And so they're talking basically about the same thing. They were to hang around people who were giving out good vibes and good vibrations. As a matter of fact, the original name of the song was Good Vibes instead of Good Vibrations. Now, I want you to know, a vibe can be an idea, a method, a connection between two people and a person, a vibe of a sensation, an atmosphere, it can be a twin, it can be a style, a vibe is similar, amen, to a person's spirit, as I said, atmosphere, the feeling means to have a vibe, it's agreeable with you, it's likable, drawable with persons in the same activity. Pentecost, as I told you last week, it was a vibe. What you do stand, uh, what you stand for is a vibe. What you believe is a vibe. 
One thing about the Spirit of the Bible is that the Bible means you're in agreement with what that Bible is. That's why you hear a lot of folks say, misery loves company. Birds of the same feather flock together. And I want you to know pretty much, uh, you ever notice when your parents used to catch you in your long doing years ago, amen, as a child? Amen. People like, well, Obama, they, they was doing it, not me. But no, you must have been doing it too because you were with them. Can I get a witness here? Now, I tell people all the time, if you're not a bank robber, why hang out with bank robbers? And the Bible basically tells us, amen, if we, amen, hang around such a thing, we realize that sooner or later, if you don't participate, amen, it becomes a part of your spirit. Anybody ever woke up sometime, amen, and thought you were somebody else? Most people, I see some of you, I see some of you, you all are smiling and looking good, but I guarantee you, if you eat the greenest collard greens, amen, or some amen, chicken with extra amen, or uh, uh, flour on it, you'll go to sleep and you'll dream about some stuff you, that you can't believe that you saw or heard or seen. You gotta get a witness here. And, and sometimes people say, well, you must have woke up on the wrong side of the day. And sometimes your spouse, your mate, your friend, your co-worker, they can tell, amen, when you got your hips on your shoulders. Tell you the witness, you know, don't bother me today, man. That's not the day, not the day. You got to drop that vibe that you have. That's why you got to feed your spirit person with love and kindness and God and swiftly. You need to get around somebody that, amen, that believe God just like you believe God. Don't get uh, around people, amen, who make you feel as if, amen, they don't think the Lord is going to show up. I want to be around some folks that so wherever you going to come over here and sit next to me because the God, I said, I get called it. And he told me he won't show up there. And I, I suggest you get next to me right now because he's going to show up after a while. And I believe when he show up, everything that's around me, God's going to be there. Is there anybody in the house right now that's going to be around some vibing folk that's going to be around from God and what God brings to the table? Well, I want you to know it's in the text. Somebody saw this in the text. I want you to know the text was a vibe for Israel. And Israel as a nation, they found themselves here at Joshua chapter 24, amen, at a place called Shechem. Somebody shout Shechem. I said, Shechem, I said, Shechem, Shechem. Shechem was a place, amen, amen, where you would find, amen, a lot of where you find Palestine and Israel it is now. Amen. It was a uh, two mountain peaks, amen, one on the right and one on the left, and Shechem was down in the valley. Amen. And I want you to know in Hebrew, the word Shechem means shoulders or battle. I thank God, amen, because you got to understand there's something that, amen, a German philosopher by the name of Herman Gunkel, amen, he called it the system lady. And the system lady suggests in order to understand what God is saying in God's word, you got to understand the location of the text. That's why sometimes, my beloved brothers and sisters, amen, you got to understand whatever kind of situation you are in, that's what you got to pray a situational prayer. Uh, even in philosophy, there's something called situational ethics, which is, amen, when I'm someplace, amen, I may act a little bit different but, than I do here. In other words, that's why some people can't confuse, amen, or can't differentiate, amen, because of the atmosphere that they're in. Can I get a witness here? And then that's why some people say that when in Rome, be at the Roman too. Now, that does not mean that you don't have any God in you, but you just don't want to go against the rules because you say sanctify and feel with the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to know there's somebody in here right now. If you know you've been in school, yes, you have. They have cut out prayer. Amen. They have, they don't want to stop you. They want you to pledge allegiance to a flag, but they don't want to say an amen and one God individual. They don't want you to have your prayer club unless you're out there somewhere, but that does not stop you from praying. No, it does not may not be the form or the fashion or the vibe at the moment. Can I get a But the God, he said, if he is everywhere, and that's why you got to come to grips, amen, amen. Turn off your theology. Turn off, amen, amen, your theological, amen, flowers. And say, God, I know man may say things should be this way, but because I know the word of God, 
God, I don't have to agree with everything that they do, but I know who I am as a child of God, no matter where I am. Is there anybody in here ever been on vacation? You've been like the fella? You got your groove back. You went down there. Yes, you were. Amen. I see some of you. Amen. Some of you St. Paul numbers. Amen. You have that little coconut. Amen. With that umbrella in it. Amen. And I want you to know you're having a good time and you'll be wondering if that's the deacon on my page. If he's, amen. If he's scrolling down my page to see if I'm thinking and drinking all the devil is a lie. Amen. I'm not over there in the Caribbean. I'm right here in East Mexico. But I want you to know, as far as I am here in East Mexico, I'm going to be putting the Lord. Now, when I go to the Caribbean, I told you, y'all might as well be real with me. Some of you, amen, are so saved. You act like you can't turn to the left and to the right. But boy, if you get in the right location, you're going to find yourself. And I remember when I used to do stuff, amen, and do everything. And amen, you can not the fact that God just wants you to do. Look at your neighbors and neighbors. You can't forget who you are. Every now and then, amen, you can look in the mirror, in the mirror and hear where God will remind you of who you are. That's why the Spirit, amen, the Scripture, amen, was read earlier that let nobody think they are God themselves more than they think they are to. Because some folks forget who they were before they got saved. If that be the case, why do we act like we are holier than thou? And then knowing that if it had not been for God changing our life, we will still be the same person that we will work before we fill out this altar and say, Lord, give me my soul. And if the Bible says that life is but a vapor, amen, even if time says it's a thousand line between love and hate, amen, amen, the right situation, the right location, you'll be back to that old scoundrel that you used to be before you can take your place. But I want you to know here, my beloved brothers and sisters, amen, God, amen, told Joshua, call all the leaders together. Call the leaders, call the Israelites, call Amen. The priest called everybody together. Tell them to meet me and say, Just as them if it, amen, if, if, if the, 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 the look of the veil reminded them of two strong shoulders, what God said, I'm going to renew my covenant with my people. Now, I want you to know, more than once, the Lord has renewed his covenant with his people. Why? Because Israel, just like you and I, had a proclivity, amen, of backsliding. They had a proclivity, amen, of idols. They had a proclivity, amen, to go back and start doing what they used to do or worrying about what other folks do. Don't believe it? The text says, he tells them, amen, get rid of, amen, your bear worship. Get rid of your actual pose. Get rid of, amen, serving all these other gods. And you know the reason Israel back into captivity on two or three occasions is because every time God brought them out, boy, they would get ready and go right back to where they came from. Now, I want to ask somebody a question because this Bible is for everybody. Is there anybody in here tired of going around the same old mountain? Anybody in here tired of going through the same disappointment you had last year? Anybody tired of being fired from the same job? You get another one, you do the same thing, get fired from that. Anybody in here that's tired of going through the same old thing? And because God loves us enough, He'll let you lose before He gives you what you've been praying for. And some people don't understand what God is saying. I want to put you in a place that although you may remember what you did, but when it comes upon your heart and your mind, you won't go back to being the person you used to. I wish I had some help in here. There's some folks in here that pastor. I used to be a rascal, but I can't I just can't go back and do what I used to do. Uh-uh. Too many holidays. Too many sleepless nights. I can't go back. So God said, them, oh, Joshua, bring them the scripture. You got to understand what jo- uh, Joshua was doing. He knew he was old in age. He couldn't do what he used to do. The Bible 
said, yes, he lived. He said that he died at 110 years old. In other words, he came to grip in his mind that wherever God is getting ready to take me, it's all because he's already promised. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, amen, you can't buy with everybody, amen, like you can buy with God. Because what God is saying, whatever I promise you, I'm going to, amen, fulfill my promises. You know, like how God does it. God always comes through. And I got to hear my grandma say, you may not come when you want it. But he's always I'm coming. Anybody in here waiting on God for the breakthrough? Anybody in here waiting on God? Amen. To change your situation? Anybody in here waiting on God to do something, amen, that you don't even believe you can do? But because you got strength enough to say, Father, if you say it, don't tell it to me. But then again, there may be somebody on this side that's going to want it to. And then somebody on this side saying, Let's be real. I want to know if you don't want to do it. And if you will, can come to do it. And say, God, we are praying and believing for you to do the unthinkable, to do those things that we didn't think were possible. And that's why, St. Paul, we got to have a different body of Can I tell you? And be guilty? Y'all don't take it. Take it for love. Can you take it for love? Let me turn that to you. Take it for love. Thank you for that. You can't keep talking about what always was and ain't been right. You can't continue to talk about what used to be or what happened to you. Well, you got to have empathy. God is a never dead God. I've talked for seven weeks on the word empathy here. You got to understand empathy is different than sympathy. Sympathy says you're concerned about somebody's problem. But if it is said, I'm concerned about your problem, then I'm going to do something about it. And I want you to know every one of us has an issue that comes to our life every now and then. And I want to call the next question, amen. Amen. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to praise God when it looks funny? Are you going to praise Him? When you're praying with you, are you going to praise him and spare him? Amen. When it looks like all hope is gone, child of God, you got to do something about your problem because talking about it ain't going to change anything. But you got to have a change of heart and a change of feet and a change of culture so that God didn't get more than he was saying, God, just keep the pain. And if God is going to bring it to pass, then you got to have a posture. Somebody shout posture. Victorious folk don't, amen, hold their head down. Victorious folk, amen, walk and talk, amen, and praise God like it's already done. And this is what we got to become. We got to be able to come into our church, amen. Sometimes I see folk look like they're in the last step. No, child of God, when you come to church, a new God, amen, and for everybody, it's that we ought to come in the doors believing, amen, that we're going to leave better than we can. Oh, when we come into the house of God, I pray that preacher preaches today a word that speaks to nobody but me. Oh, when I come to church today, I believe I'm sitting with a migraine, but I'm leaving with a miracle. Oh, come on, come on, church, come on, come on. Oh, the church got to be a place, amen, where the preacher is not going free and the truth is not getting paid. Oh, but when all God's children get together, we can stop out and hug each other and love on each other. Oh, man, amen, look at your neighbor. Look at neighbor. I'm not worried about your credit score. I'm not worried about how much you make. I'm just stupid and excited that you are here in God's place. Oh, what God is getting ready to do for me, He's going to do for you too. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and your neighbor. Amen, amen, this time I'm going to pray over there. Because there are some folks, all they want to do is complain. There are some folks, all they want to do, amen, is pray and pray. But boy, when you get the Bible in a church, when everybody is believing God for a breakthrough, dear, amen, the dove and the root and the tree and the pillar of the water, they can pray the Bible in the direction of God. I don't know about you, my beloved brother, this person, Praying God, open doors, not being in the world of God. I'm seeing him that morning out of nowhere. But then I want you to know I was told, but now I'm happy. And that's why the scripture says, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Let us go into the house 
My beloved brothers and sisters, we pray that you have had an awesome experience, amen, with the church known for its faith. We here at St. Paul are looking forward, amen, to you eventually tuning in again or possibly joining our church. There are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can scan the QR code that's coming up on your screen. We asked you that for information in terms of you wanting to join or become a part of our newsletter, become a part of our community concerns. Amen. Scan the QR code. Also, if by some chance you want to sow a seed into this dynamic ministry, we ask, amen, that you would follow the steps on the, after scanning the QR code as well. But until the next time, we look forward, amen, to fellowshipping with you here at the church known for its faith. God bless you and have an awesome day.